All right. So I want to make this one as real as possible because guys, this just happened in my clinic, not 15 minutes ago. And I think it's a great learning lesson and it's really at the heart of what the entire website is all about. If you want to get to drchadpeters.com, this is it. I want to have the ability to take the things that just happened in my clinic and then get them out there for all of you guys so we can learn. So the basic scenario here is I am the doctor, you came to see me and you are the patient. Now I don't care in real life if you actually are a patient or if you're a physical therapist or an athletic trainer or whatever, just put yourself in this situation one-on-one -on -one because this happens all the time and we can all learn from this. So my client came in and said, I've got this long-term neck issue and when I run, my arm starts to go numb. I feel it start in the back of my neck and it goes down my arm and I've got this. Now I went through and took her through all the exams. You guys know how to do all this stuff. And I said, hey, I think this is basically what you've got going before. We've worked on this before. So I took out my little inflatable ball. And if you guys haven't seen the video on cervical stabilization yet or neck stabilization, check it out because it's a super powerful tool. But the trouble is nobody does it. Nobody does it. So I don't know if it's, it's a disconnect and it's just not happening from the doctor to patient relationship or because it's not real flashy, nobody does it. But this is the problem. As I started to explain it to her, she said, well, you've shown me this before. Well, have you, have, have you tried it is what I said. No, I just haven't. Okay, so let's try it and let's see what happens because I'm not telling her this is for sure the end all beat all explanation that's going to fix her. But if I don't have the information on the thing that I thought was going on, let's do the applicable treatment. And then does she get better or not? If we don't have that clue and that information, how can we go on? You just can't. So I went through the entire thing again and she just looked at me glassy eyed, blank, nothing, didn't see it. So that's a big part of why you have to do the spiel. It's also a big part of why I wanted to have it recorded. So if this is now the third and the fourth and the fifth time that I've gone through this with her and it's just not clicking, well, maybe the video is the way to do it. So I'll click on that. But my deal is I think a lot of times our clients just aren't jiving with what we want. They want a simple fix. They don't want to have to do work. They don't want a spongy little ball. And the trouble is if they don't try it, we don't know if it's working or not. It's very easy as a chiropractor or a therapist, or especially think like athletic training. It's very easy to say, well, our clients just aren't doing their stuff. They're not doing their homework. Well, that's, that's too bad. It's our job to make sure they do their homework. So explain it differently, have a different way of getting it through there or come up with another way and, and push how it is. What I've seen in my experience is most of my patients will give me two weeks. If I can keep the exercise between like, you know, 30 to 90 seconds, super easy. I don't start them out with like, Hey, here's my five hours of exercises you have to put in all day. Cause even with me telling her to lean into a ball, it was just overwhelming. I just don't have time. I'm so busy. I don't have all this stuff. I get it. I live the same life. You guys live the same life. So let's start making it easy. I explained to her the movers and stabilizers and why it's so important. I hope she gets it. I hope she goes through it. Now on the same patient, as we were going through why her legs are so sore when she's running, she, this girl runs ultras and she runs marathons and her last half marathon, even at mile 10, her legs were killing her. So I asked her, where did it hurt? Well, it hurt her quads. It hurt the front part of our leg, of her legs. And I told her, you know, we've gone through this four or five different times with you. And one of the things I see in runners is almost always their glute activation isn't happening. They're not getting their butt to do what it needs to do. And she's like, well, it's funny you'd say that because I went to the gym and did all kinds of glute exercises. I got on Google and it showed me I might have a weak butt and that's why my legs are so sore. Yeah, that jives with what I say. But here's the problem. If she doesn't have the right motor control, if her brain is not connecting to her butt, it doesn't matter how many squats she did, all right? And just to prove it to you, the next thing she said, just set it in stone for me. She said, you know, I did all these glute exercises. There was eight exercises that took me about 10 minutes. I went through and did it all. And the next morning I woke up sore, but it wasn't my butt that was sore. It was my quads. Yeah, no kidding. Your glutes are offline. So what's happened here is that we put the exercises, the glute exercise and strengthening before the actual trouble. The trouble isn't the rehab exercise. It's not a weak glute. She's a runner. She runs ultras. She doesn't have weak glutes. Her glutes are not online. The way to test this, to see, to test the motor control is I had her stand up, put one hand on your butt. Now just try to flex that one butt cheek. Like you're twerking, like Missy Elliott in a rap video. Try to twerk the one butt cheek. What do you feel? My quad turned on first. Yeah, I know this happens to everybody. 
You see, it's not that the glute is weak, it's that your brain is kind of messed up and it's not a big deal. You don't want to tell some elite athlete, hey, your brain's messed up, make it sound like it's a psychological issue, it's not. Motor control is how does your brain connect to a certain muscle. And because we sit a lot and because we overuse the anterior side, a lot of times the wires just get mixed up. It's basically the map, right? If you're trying to get from one place to the other place and something's screwed up in the road, we'll just take another route, right? And in the case of running, we can easily use our hip flexors and our upper quads to create the same strength and the same motion that our glutes do. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna work right. It's not gonna feel right. So I went back to my basic glute exercises. You guys will also see that on this page. Look it up, I don't wanna reintroduce it all to you, but if you cannot make your butt fire by just putting your hand on it, then what in the world are we doing exercises to make your glutes stronger for? You're not gonna get what you want out of the exercises. You're just gonna increase the problem. You're just gonna keep the problem perpetually going on because you're doing all these squats and all these lunges and all this stuff is supposed to activate your butt but we've already proven your brain isn't firing that sequence. She's not making her butt stronger. She's making her anterior chain more activated, the exact opposite of what we wanna do. So I don't know where to go all this. This isn't a rehab exercise, but I think a lot of times in, in the therapy world on which we live and the athletic trainers and the physical therapists and the physios and these sports related chiropractors, we're messing up our order. And then it's really easy to say, well, it's the patient's fault. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. Well, it's not it. Patients want quick, fast, easy. So sometimes you just have to sit down and have this one-on-one -on -one talk. You aren't doing the things that we need you to do. It may seem really silly to put ice on a hot lower back before we start doing exercises, but that's the only way we're gonna get the inflammation away so that the back muscles can now be able to activate. It may seem really funny to put your hand and make your butt flex, but that's the only way we're gonna train the brain. Hey, that's where my butt is. Now we can start doing glute exercises to fix the problem. But if the first part of the chain isn't done the right way, we don't get anywhere. It may seem funny to lean into a little ball, but these tight muscles back here, they're never going to relax if you're asking them to do the job they're not gonna do. So the fix isn't relaxed, it's just to turn the neck muscle back on. We need to be able to have these kind of talks with our patients or have a video or have an exercise routine or have a handout sheet or have all the above because people learn different ways. And if you're not gonna take the time to get your patients and get in their head where it's all happening, I think you're gonna see your results are a lot less than what they could be. So I hope this one-on-one -on -one talk works. I hope this idea of me scooting my table in here and starting with you is kind of what you guys are looking for because I think we're gonna have a lot of these. When something happens in my clinic that I see over and over and over again, I wanna be able to directly hit it with you and I wanna be able to do it within minutes of it happening so it's still fresh in my head because you guys are seeing the same thing and I want you to have a different approach on how you're handling it. Hopefully that's what you brought to my website for in the first place. So again, guys, check out the videos on Chad Knows, check out the website, Dr. Chad Peters, check out our Facebook page, like it, share it, get this stuff out there to other people that it might benefit from. There's gonna be tons and tons of more content coming for you, but I think at the end of the day, I'm gonna often refer back to this video. Here's why you have to have the basic, the little things done first if we're gonna get the big results at the end. Take care, guys. Always love having you around here. And I love where we're going in this whole healthcare world.